Okay, Lindsay, are you forgetting that I was a professional twice over, an analyst and a therapist, the world's first analrapist? I told you that's not what my doctorate is in. Welcome to the Fortress of Darkness, the nerdy nexus for all your geeky needs. I'm your host, Dr. Christian Villarreal, PhD, Junior, MD, Senior, the third Esquire. Cliff Notes is taking a look at the caretakers of our most cherished super friends, Night Nurse. Ahem. Thank you. Not even 30 seconds in, you trying to start a fandom war? Night Nurse is the name of a collective of several medical practitioners in the Marvel Comics universe. They are Linda Carter, Christine Palmer, and Georgia Jenkins, with Linda being the main bay of the group. These healthcare professional skills include mm, nursing and detective work. So basically medical Batman? Carter first appeared in the 1961 comic Linda Carter Student Nurse, debuting two months before the birth of the Silver Age of comic books. As as well as Marvel's first family, the Fantastic Four. This technically makes her one of the last relics of the golden age of comic books. The name Night Nurse didn't appear until 11 years later in the 1972 comic titled The Same Thing. Night Nurse, for those who can't think or read, which is totally common. This four issue miniseries reintroduced Linda as a young, brash, headstrong, heartfelt, hand holding, wait, where am I going with this? A ah, nursing student at the Metro General Hospital in New York. This also introduced Palmer and Jenkins as her roommates and fellow nursing students. Touted as being full of drama, romance, and excitement, these original adventures of these nocturnal attendants just weren't the same as the more modern interpretation. Our journey begins when Carter, Jenkins, and Palmer become roomies after enlisting at the Metro General Hospital. They immediately hate each other. But that doesn't last too long as the girls begin to realize that they miss the life they had before the hospital, new friendships are made, bonds are formed, and hopefully this Chrome Dome's pillow fight fantasy came to fruition. Squeaky, squeaky. Linda starts to show apt at her job, becoming one of the top nurses. She becomes engaged to one of her patients, a wealthy billionaire named Marshall Michaels, who, like a douche, gives her an ultimatum to become either a nurse or his wife, mere hours before her graduation, because he has a plane to catch. Such a progressive fellow. We know. She kicks his tuchus to the curb, pondering whether she made the right choice. Why would you ponder that? Did we not just establish how much of a douche this guy was? Anyway, in her pensive mood, she meets Dr. Jack Tryon, who she tries on for size. Meanwhile, George's brother, Ben, tries to blow up Metro General's generator with his buddy, but then he has a change of heart at the last second. Thank God. He's still sentenced to 10 to 20 years in prison, which Georgia finds unfair and begins to compare this unfairness to mob bosses roaming free. I mean, the man tried to blow up a hospital, Georgia. Think about that. Meanwhile, I'll think about some other guy who tried to do that. Wow, he's so cool. Anyway, later, Georgia has to save a mob boss's life with Linda. So, hashtag karma? Christine, on the other hand, has to deal with her rich papa telling her to quit her job and come live off of his money, which she already said she doesn't want to do. Oh, how the times have changed. She becomes a surgical nurse for Dr. William Sutton, one of the top doctors in New York. And of course, she falls in love with him. He is secretly an alcoholic and suffers from the shakes. He emotionally blackmails Palmer into writing fake prescriptions for him while making her unaware of what they are for. But he's not a bad guy because this is the type of comic this is. Where's my nurse? Hello, nurse. After a patient dies, Sutton confesses his misgivings, and Palmer, unable to go home, takes a private nursing job at what looks like the Moors from Withering Heights. For whatever reason, everyone is spooked by this mansion. An old woman, her butler, and her paraplegic nephew all live in this Scooby-Doo-esque funhouse. Twisted son of a bitch! You're the one. Mom told me I needed to finish what I started. Well, as long as Lex is around, I'll always have to fight for my place in this family. Lucas, 
You are not going to shoot your brother. Palmer begins to become suspicious of the lighthouse and the strange figure prowling the grounds at night. So she enlists the help of her wheelchair-bound patient, only to learn that he's the guy behind it all, and he's not disabled at all. No one's ever really disabled as long as he has courage. He's pretending so that he can use his aunt's manor for his drug smuggling ring. He attempts to push Palmer off the nearby cliffs, but winds up being shoved off himself when the butler comes to save her. The comic was canceled after this. As you can tell, it was meant to capitalize on the teenage girl-driven soap opera-like stories, but ultimately failed. Writer Gene Thomas once said that it's too serious to be with the romance comics, but not male action-oriented enough to be with the superhero comics. Then, in 2004, Linda Carter returned to the Marvel Universe. One day, Linda was saved by a hero. Okay, this inciting incident prompted her to open a small clinic in Chinatown to serve as a medicinal healer for the superhero community. It is then that she takes up the mantle of Wonder Woman. Um, sorry, wrong Linda Carter again. She becomes the Night Nurse. Hey, isn't that the title of her comic from the 70s? What, I don't read this? Since then, she's been primarily helping out the likes of Daredevil and Elektra, who is a good friend. She's one of the few non-superpowered or sciencey heroes who has the ability to treat powered people such as Luke Cage. She has shown up to help the superhero community here and there. Linda also developed a budding romance with Doctor Strange. You see kids, let me try my best to explain what love is. Adolf Hitler once had a handgun, and it was embedded with negative magical properties because, you know, Hitler. Someone, <coughs> brigand, <coughs> used this very weapon to shoot Doc Strange. Benedict Wong, not knowing what to do, rushed him to Night Nurse's clinic, and so feelings began to bloom for the Nurse of the Night and the Strange Doctor. After she followed Strange and Wong on some damned fool idealistic crusade like their father to find Brigand, it inadvertently resulted in her center of healing being burned to the ground. But the heart knows what it wants, until apparently it doesn't when they break up later in the comics. Christine Palmer, on the other hand, has returned to Metro General and had some fun adventures with Nightcrawler, but not really, because he decided to bamf away. Georgia Jenkins has not resurfaced, but we're sure it'll happen soon enough. Carter and Jenkins have not been seen outside of the comics as of this video right here. However, Linda Carter was combined with Heroes for Hire character Claire Temple for the Marvel Netflix Defenders franchise and is portrayed by Rosario Dawson. They went with the Claire Temple name, though Temple herself was not a member of the esteemed Nurses of the Night. Club. Christine Palmer appears as the lead in 2016's Doctor Strange as part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and is played by Rachel McAdams. Though her character is named and is visually based on Christine Palmer, like Claire, she draws heavily from Linda Carter. Oh come on guys, this is supposed to be a Marvel episode! How did we get so many DC Easter eggs in this one? More! Good! That's all we have for today. If you enjoyed our treatment, not likely, leave your comments in the used syringe depository box labeled Biohazard. I'm sure someone will come by and pick them up. Please like, subscribe, and follow us on our social media, or we'll send our butler after you. This has been Cliff Notes on the Fortress of Darkness. I'm Christian Villarreal, and always remember, never fear the dork up here.